and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Greece is the word, sees the gang vacationing in Greece, only to be stuck in your chamber with a descending ceiling trap straight out of Resident Evil. The only solution is in a scroll Velma finds that tells the tale of an ancient Greek version of our characters. Yes, that's right, we're going back in time to ancient Greece, a time of great scholars, fierce warriors, and terrible monsters. The entire episode is set in ancient Greece similar to how scroogey Do was set in a different time period, 1843 London. Normally, I'm not a fan of these kinds of episodes. It's hard to become invested in stories within a story, since it doesn't usually matter to the show or the episode as a whole. I even groaned a little when I realized that this is what this episode was going to be about, but I have to say the episode won me over pretty quickly because of the usual Beagle Scooby-Doo writing and humor. The Greek mystery gang come together as a result of Arachne, wreaking havoc to stop a wedding between Velmonia and the prince, which would strengthen both cities. In this era, Velma is a princess of Athens, Daphne is her servant, Fred is a warrior, Shaggy, or Shagrates, is a scholar, while old Scooby-Doo himself is, surprise, an oracle. Immediately, each of the roles in this story set up a lot of jokes, which has always been the show's strength. There's Daphne collapsing in this scene at the start of the episode. <sighs> ah, here she is now! Shaggy passing on his knowledge to the younger generation, but it's all about food. Or even the reveal of who the Oracle really is. Aha! The great all-seeing Oracle is really... <gasps> a dog! There's so many noteworthy comedic scenes in this one episode alone, it's crazy. I might even hazard as to claim it's the funniest episode yet. The best moment being, for me, Shaggy and Scoob as Zeus and Hera. I had a huge grin on my face while this whole scene played out. There's just something about how long it's drawn out that adds to its hilarity. It's just gold. And the chase scene music for this episode was a real banger. And was so good, I had to rewatch the chase scene because I got distracted listening to the song. We gotta change your lives, spread the science, I just said. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the music from What's New Scooby-Doo, specifically the theme song by Simple Plan. It really makes me wish that they would release a soundtrack for this show so everyone could enjoy it, but I doubt that's ever going to happen. And even though I said I dislike period piece slash flashback episodes or whatever style this kind of episode is, I will admit the writing is outstanding beyond just the comedy mentioned earlier. Velma struggling with her duties as the princess, despite not wanting to marry someone she doesn't love, was intriguing, and Daphne's constant reminders of being forced into servitude were funny, though admittedly did get tiresome at times. And I thought it was a bit different that instead of Velma deciding to run away after all, she realized that although she didn't want this marriage, if she shirked her responsibilities, her city would suffer. I know, I know, it's a Scooby-Doo cartoon, and it's not that deep. But usually modern stories opt for the type of princesses who throw away their duties, even if it ends up hurting other people, so it was a nice change of pace, in my opinion. Oh, I almost forgot to talk about the monster for the episode, Arachne. I adored the design for the monster. She really felt creepy, as most spiders are. I would not want to find her chilling out in the corner of my room, that's for sure. Though I know some of you freaks would absolutely love that. Maybe it's just the concept of a giant spider with the upper body of a woman chasing you, but she really gave off uh, intimidating vibes. Like, she could have really hurt them if she wanted to. Also, she shot webs out like Spider-Man does, from his wrist. That's neat. The inspiration for this character is, of course, the Greek mythological figure herself. Uh, according to the tale, she challenged Minerva, goddess of wisdom and crafts, to a sewing contest, basically. Uh, but so enraged by the lack of flaws in Arachne's tapestry, Minerva beat the woman with a shuttle. No, not that kind of shuttle. And it led to the girl hanging herself out of shame. Then she became a spider. You know, as one does after you hang yourself. Of course, none of that is alluded to in the episode, because that'd be a bit too dark for because he would do, but it'd have been kind of neat to see some reference to who Arachne really was. 
And not really related to the episode at all, but I kind of find it amusing that I just played a game featuring a character named after Arachne, where they did recount the myth, and then I watched this episode. Life's full of coincidences. The twist as to who the spider monster is was only something I partially figured out, the other aspect actually taking me by surprise. It's not an unusual twist, but it worked within the context of the episode, and I liked it. I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen the episode yet, so, you know, go watch it if you want to see what I'm talking about. This episode, in my opinion, was a real joy to watch, and I'm glad that it was the one episode I ended up reviewing as the first video I did on my return to the channel. If you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you do. It's all on HBO Max. And if you have seen it, let me know what you thought of the episode down in the comments below. Before we end things, a reminder that members get early access to videos and other perks, so consider joining today. I also have merch for sale too, so grab some if that interests you. Thanks for watching, and take care. Well, at least we solved the mystery. I'm hungry. Like I could go for a really big pita. Uh, guys?